Welcome back to Wild World for part two in our short winter series. Now this week we celebrated World Wetland Day and the importance of this critical habitat as one of the most biologically diverse environments on the planet. Sadly, we've lost 90% of our wetlands here in the UK, but there is hope. Beavers, with their ability to transform landscapes, can restore depleted habitats into thriving wetlands. With reintroductions of beavers in sites across the UK, we can monitor changes over time. And at the Cornwall Beaver Project, just down the road from me, it's hard to ignore the transformation that has taken place since a pair of beavers were released in 2017. Not only has the site developed into a series of pools much better able to hold water on the land, helping with both flood and drought, the boost in biodiversity has been staggering. From 11 different dragonfly species, 15 new bird species, and now, during winter, nine of the 13 bats found in Cornwall have been recorded at the site. It is plain to see that this newly created habitat is now home to a host of species that depend on wetlands. At the same time, creating a more resilient environment for us. We now join Jack Haig in Lincoln, who relocated in between lockdowns and discovered an unassuming wetland right on his doorstep. Growing up on the hills of Sheffield, I was spoilt with ancient woodlands behind my back garden and the Peak District National Park just a 10 minute drive from my front door. So when moving to Lincoln last year in between lockdowns, it was incredibly important to me that I find new wild spaces to explore and stay connected to nature. And amazingly, I found Fiskerton Fen, a small wet fenland landscape, seven hectares in size, right next to the River Witham, and it's right on my doorstep. When I first arrived in the summer, there was no one here. All the signs were old and worn, and I didn't really have much hope in this old nature reserve. But I decided to spend some more time here. I set up my trail camera and wandered around to see if anything called this place home. Many species that depend upon wetland habitats, their reed beds and open water will return naturally to man-made spaces over time. And it didn't take long before I realised that this place was full of wildlife. Alongside the plethora of small birds, I've had sightings of barn owl, kestrel, red kite, fox, badger, muntjac, and two very special species I did not expect to find, otter and Eurasian bittern. With only 80 breeding males in the UK and just 600 wintering birds, they're incredibly elusive birds, making spotting them very difficult. It's winter on the fen, so things have slowed down, but the bittern is still here, the foxes still roam, and what I love about this season is the beautiful low light and the still frosty mornings and the many other species that you can't see in the summer, such as fieldfare, redwing and redpoll. And though the temperatures are cooler and the days shorter, winter brings a host of wildlife to this little fen. The fen isn't only important to the species that rely on it, but it has been a place of solace and escape for me during an incredibly difficult time. It has taught me to appreciate the small things and is an example of conservation measures, large or small, in action and really working. If it wasn't for the Lincolnshire Wildlife Trust, this place would not exist. I hope you can all find your own oasis this winter. And just remember, it may be closer than you think. Lucy Kitchen is an aspiring filmmaker who recently moved to Bristol. Determined to calm her anxiety about moving to a new city during lockdown, she set about exploring her local patch and found an inner city oasis. Like so many of us, I have struggled with my mental health in the past. I was having a bit of a rough time with it just before the move. So the idea of spending lockdown on my own in a brand new city made me feel extremely anxious. I knew getting out in nature would be exactly what I needed. I didn't really know anyone here and I hadn't spent any significant time in Bristol before moving here but I'd heard of a deer park locally, so I set about finding it. What I had discovered was this beautiful green space right on my doorstep, hidden amongst the hustle and bustle of the city. It became a safe space for me to escape and spend time with the magnificent red deer that populate the park. 
During the winter months, a lot of the hinds will be pregnant, ready to give birth in the spring. Whilst rutting season has ended, it's still possible to hear the occasional roar from the stags at this time of year. The orange light and crisp air make for some truly stunning scenery over the city and make winter mornings here simply magical. I think spending time with the deer gave me that essential freedom outside the four walls of my room where I was able to just stop thinking for a while and just breathe. I was less anxious and generally felt happier in my own company. I have good and bad days, as do we all, but I'm no longer afraid of lockdown in my new flat. I urge anyone who's considering getting out into green spaces but perhaps doesn't know where to start to give it a try. Try starting by walking out to the end of your road. Maybe there's a path you haven't noticed before. And once you find it, I can't tell you how beneficial it is. Billy Heaney has been a regular here on Wild World, sharing his camera trap captures with us through spring and autumn. Now we're here in winter and Billy is in a new location and wasted no time in getting his camera traps rigged up. At the start of last year, I found myself in a slightly unfamiliar landscape. I'd swapped living by the sea in Cornwall to a life beneath the trees in Gloucestershire. And as we went into lockdown, I kept sane by exploring my local woodland and getting to know its inhabitants. And now at the start of 2021, I've moved again, deeper into the depths of Gloucestershire and I've got somewhere brand new to start exploring. Now we all know that I love a camera trap or two, so it hasn't taken me long to get them set back up spying into the lives of my local wildlife. And with permission from Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust, I've been doing just that. Just up the valley from my house is a hidden freshwater marsh and the location of my first camera trap mission of 2021. Setting up my camera traps gives me something to look forward to, an escapism of sorts, getting glimpses into the daily lives of creatures that we might not otherwise be able to see. And sometimes you can capture something really special. And I just had to share this with you. A really good friend of mine and adventure buddy, biologist and farmer Ed Burrell, is currently living up on Isla, on the west coast of Scotland. And just last week, he came across a dead deer at the top of the hill behind his house. So what did he do? Well, like any good biologist, he rigged it with a camera trap to see what avian opportunists might come in to take advantage of a free lunch. And what you're about to see is nothing short of camera trap wizardry, a golden eagle. Just check out the size of those talons, those great big fluffy trousers, and the sound of its powerful bill hitting bone. Right now, we all need something to look forward to. And for me, seeing what my camera traps have gathered each week is the perfect way, even if it's just for a moment, to forget everything that is currently going on and simply enjoy and marvel at the natural world on my doorstep. And now, time for our weekly bird song lesson with the lovely Lucy. Today, the songster we're going to meet is one of the most familiar garden birds going. If you've got any kind of bird feeder set up in your garden, you're bound to see this bird. It is, of course, the blue tip. Now, this tiny little bird packs a colourful punch. It's got that bright blue cap, a yellow belly and a black stripe running straight through the eye. And these little birds can be really, really feisty despite their size. Now, unlike a lot of the other songsters that we've met, the blue tit song can be quite short. It's not as melodic or complex or tuneful as other songsters like the blackbird and the robin. And when listening out for it, it's best to remember a little phrase. It's very, very high pitched and it sounds as though the blue tit is saying, tee tee, lily 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 lily, tee tee, lily 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 lily. And that can vary a little bit. Sometimes there's only one T, sometimes there's two, and there's often quite a few lilies afterwards. But that is the high pitch noise that you've got to listen out for, for the blue tits singing. As well as that, they're quite vocal and aggressive when it comes to the feeders, so they'll make quite a lot of scratchy call sounds as well. They're delightful little birds to listen to. They're full of character and feistiness, so do keep an eye out if you're feeding them in your garden this winter.
someone else listening out to the birds on their local patch is Ben Porter and we join him at home in Wales at dusk as he's heading out to get immersed in the sounds of nature. As our short winter days fade towards dusk, a spectacular event unfolds all across the country on a daily basis. I'm really lucky to have one such amazing event happening just a few hundred metres away from my home here in North Wales. And I'm just heading out this evening to take a look and hopefully show you what's going on. Can you hear that? There's already a few coming in. What I've come to see is a crow roost. Something that a lot of people overlook, but is actually an absolutely spectacular event, which demands a lot more attention than it gets. So here we are. I've arrived in the woods, not too far away from my home. I can already hear a few arriving. To get an even more intimate immersion into this incredible phenomena, I'm actually going to use my homemade plant pot parabolic reflector and this allows me to have a much higher amplification in listening to and recording the amazing cacophony that's going on above. Pretty awesome. Roosts are really important for a whole number of different reasons through the winter period. The first is for safety in numbers, so by, by coming together into these big flocks, individuals are less likely to be predated themselves. The second is for shelter and warmth, so they're more able to survive the actual night themselves. The third reason is that roosts serve as information exchange centres. Now to you and I, that's just that they have a good natter. They find out from each other where the best foraging sites are, who's with who and where they should go foraging tomorrow. We're only just scratching the surface of the complexity of the level of social interactions that go on in these roosts. And I like to think of it when I'm using this parabolic reflector, I'm just sort of eavesdropping on their conversations really. And it's absolutely amazing to think in amongst all of that cacophonous chaos, there's actually meaningful information being exchanged. As darkness descends, the roost will gradually quieten down as individuals and pairs find their different roosting locations only to repeat the same phenomena tomorrow at dusk. We finished a day in the Kengorms where photographer and filmmaker James Stevens is getting lost in the small stuff. Winter in the Kengorms is special. A crisp silence broken only by the sound of birds and a gentle patter of snow. I'm very fortunate to live in such a beautiful place and the winters here are certainly a highlight. There is a magical feeling walking through a scene of glistening white. A sense of serenity. My feet laying the first tracks on unbroken snow. This tranquil scene is stunning everywhere I look. But for me, the most intense beauty is seen in the macro world. It's often the overlooked which shows nature at its best. The sunlight shimmering through the smallest of droplets, glistening through a branch delicately covered in snow. Yeah, this is why I love winter. Most of the time we are focused on seeing the enormous scenes of grandeur. But if you take the time to look at the small scale, well, you might find a beauty that you can see all to yourself. And that's rather special. Thank you so much for joining us. And for those of you that have sent in your pictures and clips of your winter inspirations, Join us next week for more doorstep discoveries where we'll also be announcing the winner of our Wild World Photography Competition.